Hello, and welcome to the So Emotional Podcast. Here on the cast, we discuss everything emotions through the lens of attachment, the nervous system, and internal parts work. We're a little irreverent and like to have fun exploring the emotional issues and dynamics that interest us. So come along and hang out. Let's explore the fascinating lands of emotions. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the So Emotional Podcast. I am your host, Angela Wetzel. I'm a life and relationship coach. This is also your host, Nick Carl, and he is an experienced somatic experiencer over four years under his belt and practicing. And on this podcast, we love to talk about all things emotions and to clear up the stigma and enigma around these things. Amen. Cool. Today, we're going to be talking about lions and triggers and bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. Triggers. Triggity triggers. <laughs> really a hugely important topic. Uh, it's like any time you find yourself in any kind of relationship, and that includes the one with yourself, there's an opportunity for triggers. And if you've been doing the relationship adventure, <laughs> trying to you know be in relationship with someone, you may have noticed that triggers cause other triggers. And um, it's such a fascinating thing, but it's also something that I think everyone who's in relationship ultimately strives to like want to know how to manage those things and handle the situation in a better way. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, just triggers and how they come up and how they're complementary, how one sets off the other and potentially some little tips and tricks. So when I think about triggers, does a trigger always have to be kind of a sharp turn? Does it always have to be like a, you know, something happens and then there's like a distinct change in energy? Are they all like that? I mean, I know that that's a like classical trigger. It's like, well, the, the tree fell on me and then I got very upset, you know, something to that effect. Um, yeah. Are you so... I'm not exactly sure what question you're asking, but are you asking like, because the trigger is signaling that there, like something has happened and that's caused uh, a change in the nervous system. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and we'll say more of a um, catabolic response. So a, a more of a negative energy, like what we call negative energy or more destructive or downward spiral of energy is like a trigger we could right. call the opposite like a spi a spiraling up or whatever we could call that a glimmer like polyvagal theory okay. <clears throat> but i would say that the trigger is noting that an event happened which then caused a nervous system response okay so it doesn't so mean it has to be extreme or like a sharp left turn because some triggers are like instantaneous and then right. huge, you know, huge reactions that maybe not don't fit into the context of what's really happening. Right. But you can have like a really tiny little trigger. Like you can get triggered and be like, I'm noticing a, a shift, like a small shift. Yeah. You know, it's still a trigger. So I, one that I noticed recently was that like, it started like really small. It was just like, well, I don't like that, you know? Like that was the first thing, like, mm, I don't like that. And then yeah. I was like, then I thought about it for a second. I was like, I really don't like that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, if I get cut off in traffic, like it's pretty instantaneous. Right. But yeah. I think that there's kind of yeah, like slow yeah. burns and that that's like the, the nature of my question. And I mm. think, I think that I know the answer, but I would just wanted to talk about it, which is like, it's not always just like bang, bing, bang, boom. Right. Sometimes it can be like I, yes. sprinkle, just like tiny little, like the tiny, like a time release trigger, or right, may, or maybe like the, well, and that's the other thing that happened is you can be triggered by something, and like not have awareness of that trigger until it's like further down the lane right. or it's picked up momentum. Like that's one thing, but I think it's also possible to have an event happen where you might think about a little, maybe not really notice it so much, 
go about your day. And then as you start to really think about and process what that's what happened and maybe like the deeper meaning, then it like hits your being, you know, at a different time in a different way. And then right. the reactions there. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so also just in talking about dynamics of triggers, right? Yeah. I think that at least for me, so I'm 41 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the energies that I consider triggers now, um, I they are kind of, it's like a habit, habitual pattern. So there's definitely a, like a pattern that happens and things that I can kind of recognize. Like it's not out of the blue. Like it's not, I don't get a lot of feelings these days that I haven't had in the past, right? Mm. Um, and so... I don't know when I think about trigger the so it's like you know it you know if I imagine myself like neutral and in the middle and in control and like embodied of me right and then I am triggered like what is then sort of like coming forward like what what is the piece and so it's like it's it's some sort of pattern right mm -hmm. and those pattern pieces you know are forged in the past somewhere, right? And so there's this, and so I think about one of the dynamics of triggers is that it can trigger sort of like projections and then reflections, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, <laughs> uh, like the last one that I had, I think that it's sort of like, it re becomes a reflection of the past, right? And then, mm. Mm -hmm. my same probably thinking and the way that I dealt with it and the way that I contextualized this energetic event that matched that one before, right? Sort of, uh, it just gave me like my, my like points of like operation. How do I deal with this type of thing? Right. Mm -hmm. And that was all sort of figured out somewhere beforehand. And I'm going back to this old piece of programming, you know? And so it's like the stimuli comes, right? Yeah. It matches something energetically from the past that I think that I've dealt with before. And then mm -hmm. that same thing from probably a long time ago is coming up and then like that little program is running or that little like thought pattern is running then. Right. So it's like the trigger comes up and it's it can yank you back into the past where there was a, a certain way that you dealt with that and it was successful to some degree, meaning you didn't die, you survived, you right. dealt with it, whatever, you moved on. So then that can be a familiar pathway to go down. Sure. And you're kind of talking about neuroception. So it's neural expectation, what your nervous system is expecting. Right. So it's like on the lookout for this thing to happen. Yeah. And then when something that looks like that, even if it's, even if you're not fully anchored in the present moment, if something reminds you of then yeah. that, you know, similar thing, it yeah. can like. Looks like react. a duck, smells like a duck. It's a duck. And I'm going to act in <laughs> like, I'm right. act all in those. My yeah. Yes. Yeah. All those things. So uh, one of the reasons we decided to talk about this is because we had a little bit of some triggering in our <laughs> creative endeavors together. <laughs> so, yeah, we did. Tell. The beginning of your triggered story yeah. and I'll, I'll come in with mine sure i guess we can explain on the back end more about like the complementary energy that exists and yeah. you know, kind of breaking that down because sure. i mean this is like a really popular and interesting things for my clients as well those that are navigating through relationships it's it's like such a huge topic that they're like i just want to learn more and know more about how this works so yeah Okay, so I don't remember like everything around it, but what I do remember is I had a really busy week and I think I had just had a ton of clients. I was super busy. I was just like going, going, going. And, um, and then later on, so, um, you know, Nick and I will talk often. Um, and it's usually about like emotional, like we're always like geeking out over, emotional stuff like internal family systems and polyvagal theory and attachment and you know we talk about everything 
uh, music, actually a lot of music stuff. But um, this night I was like having some time to myself for like the first time. Like I had like some space just to like be in my own like I was able to cook dinner and I was like chilling out and relaxing. And then I had movie night with myself and um, I was watching um, King Arthur on Netflix, the, the newer one. And it was really, really good. And I was like super into it. And then uh, Nick had called and we were chatting and I just felt, I just started to feel like really far away. And I was just like, I wasn't fully aware of what was happening, but I like, he was, chatting, you know, excitedly about some stuff he was doing that day. And I just like could not connect with it. And I was like, kind of just want to watch my movie. Like, I don't know what's happening, you know, but I wasn't like fully aware. And then um, I think I must have said something. And we ended up getting off the phone. Did I say something? It was no, I didn't say anything. That's yeah. So I didn't say anything. But we ended up getting off the phone. And then I felt like this like sense of relief to just be back in my own energy again. And I like finished watching the movie and it was so good. And then I went to sleep and I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh my gosh, I was triggered last night. I got triggered and I didn't, I was like not realizing that I needed, just needed to be in my own space. And like, honestly, it wasn't anything about Nick and not actually just wanting to talk to him. It wasn't, it was, I don't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have anyone in my energy field. I just wanted to like, you know, do me and do my thing. Cause I was having such a good time doing that. <laughs> and I wasn't able to express that or ask for what I needed. And I just realized that. And so I called him up and I was like, Hey, I just want to let you know, like, I don't know if you noticed there was some like weird energy last night and I was noticing that actually I needed to ask for some like space and time and like maybe not talk at all and just do my thing. And I wanted to apologize just because you were sharing with me and like I was completely like I was checked out and I wasn't really, you know, being fully there. So I wanted to say I was sorry. Yeah. And then something happened inside of Nick <laughs> that, yeah. So you tell your part of the story and then okay. we can talk about it. So that night when I talked to you, I, you know, it's like, I pay, t I pay attention to you. I can sense vaguely what's going on with you decently, you know? And mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, at the time I was like, yeah, I can tell like you're a little hinky. You got a little shit going on, but it was not, it was not outside like a standard deviation, you know? Like mm -hmm. the conversation just went where it was, went where it went. You said goodbye. You're a little bit distracted or whatever, or feeling something. Can tell at the time. It doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. And like you know, we've like you know, we've known each other for a while. We've navigated little things before, and completely within the realm. And respect and love still there, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And it didn't bother me. And I and when you called me the next morning. You know, like it, I was just, you know, doing my thing, whatever it was, and you apologized to me. And I was just like, and even at the time when you apologized, just like, mm. oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I could tell, you yeah, know, no big deal. No sweat, you know, no big deal. And then, you know, that conversation didn't last very long. And then I just go about my day, doop a doop a doo. And <laughs> like, this was a slow burn, right? <laughs> Like it didn't happen right away. And I was like, Ugh. you know, like I, I start, like the feelings begin to like build, right? And I was just like, oh. And in my head, the way I was like, wow, oh, you know, but she was like nice, but she didn't want to be there. Like, and I apologize. In my head, I said. No, yeah, just say it. Just I was say like, it's what a fucking phony. And then I, I was actually laying back in bed for whatever reason. I very quickly, very quickly just <laughs> went really dark, right? It was just like, mm -hmm. what a fucking phony. She's probably lying to me all the time, you know? 
Like mm. it went there really quickly, you know. And then I was just really angry. And then <laughs> that just like proceeded like a giant deep dive, right? Like I would say over the past, you know, over the past many years, like I've been through dozens and dozens and dozens of triggers of mm -hmm. lasting of various amounts of time. It's like it's because uh, uh, in my system, right, when I get triggered, it can take days sometimes for it to sort of work its course. And one of the interesting things is I think that happens that, that there for this particular trigger, right, uh, like the world like, gets very dark. So it's like and I, and I know that I have felt that way just about life and people. It's like nobody's to be trusted. Nothing works. This is all, everything is bullshit. Like really gathered a lot of steam really quickly. And before I knew it, within like, you know, like an hour, like I was just fucking, uh, I don't know, bent. Seriously bent. And, uh, you know, I've been on enough rides where I know, I know in some part of me that in however many days it's going to take that I won't see the same things and I won't essentially be the same person. But this particular trigger and this particular part of me was really strong, really strong. And so there wasn't much perspective. I knew that mm. there was a little bit just because I'd been on so many roller coasters and through my whole life, you know, it's like, I know that like these things come and for a long, long, long time, I always took it face value when these things presented okay. to me, that this was me, this is who I am. This yeah. is who I am. And this is how I see the world. And then I would act in my life from this place. And it's really an extreme view, right? It really is an extreme point of view of, right. Like, you're shit, you're a liar, everything is shit. I hate, I really hate everything. Yeah. And and there's been many times in my life when I acted from that, and it was really destructive to my life and to the people yeah. around me. Right, because that perspective is also a reality, where it's like, oh, that reality is like, absolutely. like, I am definitely not to be trusted, like, I am a liar, I am, you know, and everything's fucked. Yeah. 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 So, I knew, I knew, I just knew that it was going to be however many days it was. In this case, it was seven full days. Right. Right. And, well, you can tell the rest, but I was going to say, and we had continued to talk, I think, every day pretty much anyway, yeah. and I could tell there was... Right. stuff going on right um because well, we actually work, uh, yeah we're working we're working go. on a we're working on a writing project every night right so that's one of the yeah. things we're clubbing on every night having to get mm -hmm. together right and it, it, i think that there's other sort of like complimentary triggers happening you know there's that one thing where everything is shit but in my system in my body like i don't mm -hmm. let it actually run the show like it's, it's, it's like almost sitting in the room, like cussing and pouting and like dragging everybody down for sure. But I don't let it get like actively hostile. It's like, mm. you can feel the energy in a room and I, that's the undeniable part. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the, <laughs> and <laughs> the funny thing is, is like that part of me thinks that it can hide, that people can't feel that. It, it thinks that like I can like shit on them like sort of behind their back or something or, or be like full of hate and that like they just can't tell because I didn't say it. <laughs> like it's a really like it, if it's like, you know, and think about like that, like, oh, you can't you can't see me. You can't feel me. That's like that's a really young energy, you know, mm -hmm. it seems like it's just because that that strategy or that idea seems really super young. So here we are. And I know you're a sensitive person, and I know that like this is what you do for a goddamn living, right? <laughs> so I don't like I don't think in my higher mind I'm fooling myself, but I am trying trying to just like not show up. This is because this is one of the things I was thinking about. 
It's like, it's so hot in me right now. You know, we've talked about plenty of really mm -hmm. spicy, emotional pieces. But it was so hot, and it was also directed at you, that I, I felt really guilty about, like, bringing it up with you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. And you, in your good grace, and your patience, allowed me to just be that way for a while. Yeah. And how was that? You know, I will say that I felt it and I had my own reactions to it and I had things that I wanted to do because of it. And part of it is like my coach self kind of like wants to coach Nick out of the space, you know? And I'm like, don't do it. Like he has an asked and you know, it's like, there's no invitation. And it's really easy to go into like a caretaking mode to like try to help fix emotions, especially you can feel them, right? So it was feeling uncomfortable and I kind of felt like I want to help him. And then there was another part of me that was coming up that was like, this funky, funky energy is like dragging me, you know? So it was hard to be there too. So then I was like taking care of that part too, to be like, it's okay for him to have his feelings and be in the space. And something that's really great about you is like, you do such a good job actually at not directing that energy and like not stabbing like you're really good at not foisting your energy onto people it's like you know that it's going on you have it and it's like you hold it so i didn't feel like you were just you know gushing toxicity or anything i could tell you were going through something but then i i had my own stuff that's really reflect reflective of me and how I feel about those certain energies that I'm still working on within myself, you know, holding space for them. I know that in times previous, it's not generative for me when my emotions are not settled to try to like get somewhere with my mind, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, But I don't know, there was like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to tell you what was going on. But like, I just honestly felt, I felt so guilty about hating you. Because mm. I knew that it wasn't warranted. Like mm. that felt like really terrible. I could feel that you hated me. <laughs> I was like, he hates me right now. I don't really know what happened, but he definitely hates me. And it was awkward. Yeah. But it wasn't just, it wasn't just you. I, I mean, I, I think that that was a pretty, like, even in the pantheon, uh, uh, the big bouquet of all of the things that I have been through in, say, the past five years, that was a really, mm -hmm. that was a really deep one. It was really mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, that too is like another, that's like, like, <laughs> I think like a really like deep shame part, right? Like, I don't want to be seen, like, I don't want to have people see like how dour and how mm -hmm. full of uh, hate maybe that I actually am at some times, you know? Yeah. So it was just like compound on compound. Anyway, kind of floated through the week. <laughs> and then I <laughs> I don't know. Went and saw Batman, you know, which is not a good movie. And I didn't didn't enjoy it. But something there in the theater, like it, I think it was just time too, but I could just like I could just feel my spirit lifting. I could just mm -hmm. feel like something just like raising up and like shaking off. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I don't think that I, I mean, maybe I did. It's so, it's, it was so dark that I, like, did I shit on that part or like want it to go away so bad? Like, I don't know. That too is like a little bit, maybe not great because there's a lot of juice there. There's a lot of juice. And I think mm -hmm. that, 
feeling so just like uh, uh, you know fucking hate everything there is there is there is some juice there mm -hmm. that's like uh maybe a little bit addictive and like strong and and like doesn't have a really healthy uh place uh and i was reading up on some some books talking about uh you know shame shame and anger and hatred and things like that and uh gave me some good perspective and they came like at the right times they're always there but it's just like as the energy raises you know sort of touch base with things that i have relationship with and that i trust in. it's like oh yeah oh, okay yeah this is what's happening this is what's going on you know and then <laughs> i finally did say to you like oh hey uh, hey and uh you know we're able to repair which is really cool mm. and now like i don't know so in the ping pong and i know that this can happen all the time i i know that it has happened to me plenty right mm -hmm. of trigger begets trigger right they're mm -hmm. like the energy just ping pongs back and forth i don't know like maybe i was just primed that particular day like it would have just taken anything uh, but in this case, I think the, it seems like there is a direct connection between, you know, an energy that is happening in you and then it just touches off. So maybe there's a kernel in the two, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like something I wanted to say when you were talking is like, I think it's, it's really normal in our culture, our society with this like positive vibes only and like but you know focusing on like manifesting good things and being grateful and all these things and it's like yeah. it's like kind of hard to make space for um and not a lot of people want to hold space for like negative emotions you know um this other book that i was reading recently and and while it is true that we get to decide like who we hang out with and who we spend time with i think sometimes it's um people, how do I explain this? I just, I feel like in order, like if we're super sacred about like protecting our good vibes and then we have friends or people that, or, you know, even ourselves, we have these emotions that come up. I think it's really seductive and tempting to just be like, I'm going to shut that out or I'm going to move away and not deal with it and not deal with any of that. Because the truth is, those energies, if that's triggering you, then there's stuff inside of you as well, which is like, you know, it's like that energy wouldn't be speaking to you. If you were like way up here, like out in enlightened, bliss filled, you know, bliss land, right? Like you would just be like, all I see is love. Like all I see is this person, like they're in pain and, and I can hold space for it. And I have ultimate compassion, but when that stuff is like pushing our buttons, it's like that exists within us too. So it's yeah. that like, like energy attracting like, and in this case, um, something that we were talking about with compliment, what I call complementary wounding or wounded polarity, which is not like a huge mouthful. And I'll try to explain it as best I can, but it's the idea that in this universe there's two poles to everything there's two sides to everything so where we have like um light we have darkness right and so without those two poles there's no contrast and the and like only light is one extreme and only dark is another extreme but then there's there's all these different layers and flavors and colors like in between right so what happens with triggers um, or wounded polarity, it just means you can have a wound inside and you actually have both sides of that wound inside of you because you have the imprint of that wound, the thing that happened that created that wound, and then you have the expression of that wound, which is how you decided to kind of interpret and then deal with that wound. So in the case of, let's say, abuse or just deeper traumas when something happens to us or we see some very bad behavior going on in the home like a really angry abusive parent 
one personality could say, I never want to be like that person ever. And I will do everything I can. And that person develops great empathy and great compassion for other victims and maybe a lot of hatred and shame towards that personality. So there's polarization already. Victim, abuser, we're separate. I will not ever be that. But the interesting thing is, is like that choice um, comes from that wound, which is avoiding becoming something, not necessarily a conscious choice to to choose love and compassion and healing and well-being, right? So it's resisting the very thing. And what we know, what we resist persists, which is how people that come from abusive situations find themselves with abusers again, because that polarity still exists. On the other hand, a person, instead of choosing to never be that, can make the opposite choice, which is I'm going to be like that because I never want to feel powerless again. And the person that has power in the situation is this person who's being abusive. And so this is something the nervous system is, this is a choice, an unconscious choice that the nervous system is making. And so these choices aren't really always super conscious, but we can have um, sort of an idea of where we fit on that spectrum. You know, the person who is uh, continuing that chain of abuse can feel deep shame about it, but also know that they're not necessarily control of what happens when they become triggered. And the power dynamics in that situation will usually dictate where they fall on that spectrum. So if they're with a smaller person, a child, a woman, an infant, an animal, like someone who's smaller and weaker, and that person angers them, they're more likely to take that position of abuser and victimize, you know, because what they're resisting is being victimized and thus they perpetrate that energy. Um, in another situation, they might be the smaller person. Let's say there's a, a bigger man or a, another situation where someone has more power or authority, they might find themselves being victimized in that situation. So, um, so you see this a lot with just different extremes and different dynamics. For example, like the anxious and avoidant relationship, like those types are magnetized to each other because the anxious person is actually emotionally avoidant to themselves. So the avoidant is familiar and the avoidant, um, I'm trying to like, describe this and my brain's going all mm -hmm. <laughs> so the avoidant um actually does want and need connection and supposedly their deep 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 fear is being abandoned so it's like because these two parts um again they're like two sides of the same coin they fit together like peas and carrots right and so um complementary wounds or wounded polarity it's like these triggers trigger each other they poke each other but it's like one person at one time can be holding like this end of the stick and the other is holding the other end so one person like in our example it's interesting because it's like you and i have a similar wound there right and it's interesting because i had the realization like let's say in my in my, um, my own patterning that I wasn't always allowed to ask for space or express my own needs or what I was really wanting. Like, I want to be alone. I want to be in my own space, you know, mm -hmm. wasn't always able to ask for that and have that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then my coping strategy and not being able to do that, like I'm sitting on the phone, but my energy, like I'm dissociating. Right. So then I had the realization after the fact, because sometimes it's hard to catch when you have a trigger and then you go yeah. somewhere, right? Um, and, and many times it's awareness after the fact. And so when I realized, you know, after and then called you in the morning, um, it was like me speaking about allowing myself to have that desire and to, to share what was going on. And so... Um, on the other side of it, it's like me actually taking that space, 
caused a trigger where it's like for in your case like it's not fair because i can't do that like i can't take the space without you angela being angry with me so it's fucking unfair and it's bullshit and not only that it's like you're you're showing up as a phony you're lying with your presence by being here and you don't even want to be here so there's like all this kind of stuff you know happening popping off and so it was like my trigger caused your trigger but really we both have like these similar you know kinds of energy happening yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, the reason why I felt like I couldn't ask for the space was because in my home of origin at points, if I had, like, I would have gotten in trouble or would have been right. So, right. so I, I hope I'm making that clear of like how they're actually two parts of the same whole. Have I done, has, does that make sense? I think it does make sense. I mean, it is kind of a, a complicated, it's not complicated, but it's, you know, it involves a lot of like you know perceptions right and uh and feelings yeah. and you know and we're uh making trying to make meaning out of things that sometimes you know are like fuzzy you know and uh, like are a little blurry because our vision in them mm -hmm. is uh you know yeah um one of the things you said earlier so one of the things i've observed in one of my friends is uh so he's He's got a bunch of kids, and when he gets really mad, that he'll he'll spank them, mm -hmm. and he feels really tons and tons of shame when he does it. Mm -hmm. But he, I know that like I can just tell, and well, well my perception of it is that he, like he's not sure why, like he can't tell the rest of the story, right, mm -hmm. about why that bothers him so much, you know, and about what drives him to do that in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it just takes a lot of, it takes a lot of listening and a lot of feeling and a lot of like, kind of like poking around, you know, <laughs> but for a lot, a lot, a lot of my life, you know, I just took all this stuff for just, oh, that's just me, right? It's just who I am. And I didn't really even question it. Even when things got really bad, you know, I'm just like, oh, I guess life just sucks and, you know. I'm a fucking mm. weirdo or, you know, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> just a bad relationship, you know, we just didn't get along and it's like, no, there's definitely more there, mm -hmm. you know, and I think the, you know, what you talked about, you know, with the, the two ends of the stick, um, like I can see it and I can feel it, but, uh, that's, that feels like something that is, uh, kind of like a little bit esoteric it's just a little bit hidden right it's just hidden behind so much like normality or we just don't think or we just don't feel into it that that like there's actually a relationship there and how this is actually like spilling out you know right well because usually what happens is you know someone's doing something and it's driving us freaking crazy and we're like it's just them like they're an asshole just them right it's and them I, and they're causing these feelings in me right but it's out there like what's happening is out there and has yeah. nothing to do with me right yeah. yes but when we if we are willing to be brave enough to investigate further then we can say what is it about this person or this thing that is causing these emotions to rise up in me because i house these emotions like yeah. not everyone is going to react the same way to this person to this idea to this circumstance to this yeah. thing Right. And so we get the most information by being willing to say, if this situation is showing up in my life and I'm having this reaction to it, mm -hmm. it's important to at least investigate. Like if I see this here, um, what do I have going on? Like what end of the stick am I holding? Like how, like what kind of funhouse mirror like is this right. reflecting you know what is this reflecting back to me because there is something here especially yeah. and like i'm not talking about all trauma like all you know circumstances because sometimes like shit just happens yeah. i'm not saying like because you get jumped at one point like you want that but what i am talking about is like patterns that keep showing up again um like there was someone i met a, a, a while ago i was working with this person and he was talking about 
he would be standing on the subway platform in New York. And this happened many times. And I was like, that is so weird. That doesn't happen to me. And it doesn't happen to most people. He would be standing there and some random person would come up and just hit, hit him in the head, like kind of smack him. Yeah. Just walk by him and be like, Psh! and I'm like, do you think you just have a smackable looking face? You know, I'm like, this isn't normal. That's not normal to yeah. be randomly smacked by, you know, strangers, a stranger. Right. Yeah. But in his mind, he was like, yeah, this happens to me. And I asked him, I said, has that ever happened to you before? Like in your past, did you like, was that familiar that not knowing suddenly and then something just happens? And he was like, yeah, my mom would actually get mad about something. And he's like, I wouldn't even be aware of it. And she would just come and pop me. And I said, did you know that you're still that you're, you're attracting that it's still happening because you're you're anticipating the smack yeah. and some rando pissed off person is energetically plugged in and they've got the other end of the stick. So even though mom isn't here, uh -huh. they're picking up that other part of the energy. That's like, I'm, I don't know why I'm gonna smack this dude. I'm falling through on this impulse and whatever, how it's so bizarre. Yeah. And I weirded him out and I'm pretty sure he like stopped talking to me because of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just like started observing this and, and there's just so many different ways that it shows up and it's So that's really, a real last story? That's a real story. Okay, well that goes a little bit against what you said, you know, that shit just happens, right? Well, I know that, what, what I was trying to say is, uh, I was trying to say this, okay. Yeah, thank you for clearing that up. What I was trying to say is, oh, I did clear it up, but I'll clear it up again. Um, so when we have like random events, ha like let's say. Um, but I guess getting hit in the head is not random, right? That's a pattern. Like Well, that, right, right. That's what I was trying to say. Because you can have something happen, like your your car breaks down, your, how, like bad things happen, yeah, yes. and it's not always necessarily a pattern, right? It yeah. doesn't always mean that you're like a piece of shit and God is shitting on you or you yeah. karma and whatever. Yeah. It doesn't always mean that. But when you see a pattern, and if you like continually, like, I don't know what it is. Like I attract unavailable narcissists or I attract, you know, I right. seem to be like dating the same person. He shows yeah. up in different skin, but it's the same fucking person. Yeah. Then it's like, when you have a pattern, even if it's fucking weird, if you have something that's a pattern, it keeps showing up. Then there's, there's some kind of wounded polarity and you're yeah. holding this end of that energetic yeah. equation and someone else is filling that in because you're like these um, these puzzle pieces, these like jagged puzzle pieces, and it's fitting together. And the way to heal that is to like really focus on your side of the street right. and that wound and be like, okay, how do I move this wound from this place of extremism, like extreme wounding, how do I bring that into balance? Because that's going to change what's showing up on the outside and what yeah. you're bringing to you. So of what happened to me last week and getting into like a really dark place, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. From there, from that perspective, I could say the world is total shit and I hate everything because everything is terrible, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of, and it is a pattern, like I have been there before, I have thought that before. And I know now that, that it's a, the real story is about me because this thing comes from me, right? But I don't like look out there and think that like it was because of this, this, and this, or this person did that thing to me, or because of you did a thing to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like I definitely know that for sure. Mm -hmm. it, <laughs> it, so, uh, so I, I I run into a lot of people for my job. Like I go to people's houses, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty much always been this way. I think that I give off good vibes and usually get really good mm -hmm. interactions mm -hmm. with people. It's, it's, it's actually something I rely on, you know, and I just expect it. That's, so that's an expecting thing that I think is like, uh, and people meet the energy and they match it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the times, cause that same energy I was into a week ago, I spent a lot of time there four or five years ago. 
months and months and months and months. And uh, I, it was interesting to see how that, relation, that thing that I expected started breaking down. Because if I was in that totally like down and shit energy about how other people would then show up and meet me there, Mm-hmm. It was just because uh, it was so consistent in another in another energy that when I would get into this, like, I fucking hate everybody and everything, then people met me there. And it was just really interesting to, like, have that <laughs> have that stark contrast, you know. And so it's just like, oh, no, these people aren't aren't bad or they're not doing things. They're just responding to me. The story is, again, about me and about what I'm bringing, you know. Right. And it was interesting because like in another life or another, I don't know if we were different people or I was a different person, like I could have responded to your energy in a different way and like Mm -hmm. matched you and been like, well, I fucking hate you back too. And I'm going to cut you out and not, yeah, you know, like I, but it was like, you know, like been doing this work for over a decade. So it's like, I'm not, I don't even know, do I ever? I don't know if I have that exact reaction in me where I'm like tit for tat kind of thing. But uh, I, I do feel like maybe something that um, would have been in my toolbox then would just be to like, you know, distant, just slowly yeah. creep away and be like, later. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Which, you know, I think a lot of people actually do. They're just like, sure. oh, I don't yeah. do here. And like, you know, and then confrontation, right? Because, yeah confrontation can be seen as dangerous when to confront just means to turn towards like to face. Right. Um, if you only saw bad things happen from confrontation, you're just like, I'm going to slowly disappear into the night. Um, but yeah, just observing it, like feeling the energy and instead of being like, um, and I think there was a part of me that was just like, Oh, like, he's in this place or like kind of trying to identify you like as like almost buying into that like you are identified with this and this is who you are but my higher self knows like this is not you it's actually you going into that old pattern and wounding right and so um i was like oh like i see this old Uh, temptation is to also have agreement with Nick that this is who he is, but I'm not going to agree with that because I actually know that this isn't who Nick is. Mm. And instead of trying to fix him because I feel uncomfortable with his hatred towards me or the fact that he is not happy with life or whatever, I'm just going to like observe and hold space and work on my own stuff and like keep my side of the street clean, which means not buying into any narratives that you're X, Y, Z because not identifying you as this because you're changeable, malleable, like you go through, you know, just as I go through emotional changes and phases. Right. And also not to become like codependent and try to caretake the situation so that I feel better. Um, And then also just notice like what things were triggered in me that were pointing me towards my own levels of discomfort with certain emotions and to open more, to hold space for those parts. And even the parts that felt scared by that kind of energy, you know, Mm -hmm. just because of past stuff with, you know, in my own, my own history. So in doing that, it's like, I kind of free up you to have your process without demonizing you and without trying to match that energy and be like, well, yeah. fuck you right back. Yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, repair becomes really cool. Right. And this is the whole mm-hmm. basis for security and actual relationship. Right. Is like, yeah. Being able to, hunker down when you need to and take care of yourself, have good boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Not get too destructive, right? Not get Mm -hmm. too stabby, right? Yeah, yeah. Get through the storm, right? And then 
repair on the backside. Which yeah, is nice. It, yeah, I, it was very nice. It, it's nice to be loved by you again. <laughs> like you were so, you're so loving and so generous and like being loved by you is so nice. Being hated by you was pretty hard. Uh, I'll admit, like I was like, oh, spicy, some yeah. angry stuff here pointed at me. But like, you know, you, you weren't like, you only stabbed me a couple times slightly, you know, it wasn't, wasn't too, too bad. Um, and I, I felt like um, it was funny because I felt my own boundaries come up where I was like, like, don't get it twisted. Like there was something that came up where I, oh yeah, I didn't want to share like a photo with you because I just didn't want to put it out there anyway because it wasn't a photo of me it was a photo of someone else and um and I think there was a little trigger that happened and I felt you stab me a little bit and I was just like my energy I felt good about it I was just like no it wasn't this like it just wasn't and I was a little bit I got a little bit hot about it because I felt accused of something right mm. but I was proud that I didn't like let it get into this like um where i starting to stab you back and yeah, you know, I don't, do things <laughs> i don't want to get into stabby <laughs> fights with you i don't want to do that right i'm a good stabber i know <laughs> i'm like i'm good at like eviscerating no, like, i do not want to i do not want to go there i don't because i'm not <laughs> I, like i'm not that kind of dancer you know like mm. yeah well, plus it's like, you know, that's just the ego part. That's like, oh, this is fun. You know, like, yeah. like one of my good friends, like we always joke because we're equally like really skilled at just like honing into weakness and just like ripping it apart, you know, but we don't like generally like we reserve that unless someone like comes for us and then it's like sure. ammo, but yeah. it, like, but she and I both honestly kind of delight in that. And like, it, you know, it's almost like a giddy, you know, ego energy. And it's like, maybe not the most generative thing, but something about it. It's like fun, you know, like, um, I mean, like, like, it's just like having a goddamn big Bowie knife that you know how to wield in your back pocket where yes, that could get weird with your ego. Right. But also yeah. provides you with some like modicum right. of safety and power. Right. Yeah. And so, so unlike, okay. you know, everybody has their little tricks for safety and power, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. So however that got developed, it got honed and it's pretty effective. Right. Uh, but also it's like even, you know, looking back because I would actually, yeah. So I, I would use it, um, you know, I was in the military. I had a couple of people like try to pick on me, I think, because I look really sweet and nice and small um what were you gonna say so innocent right i look innocent right I like i look like maybe you could beat me up or say shit and i wouldn't say anything back right maybe if you don't know me that well maybe which these people did not know me very well and one was in basic and one was in uh in monterey but looking back, I feel I had a lot of guilt in knowing that I like filleted them. But part of me was like, well, they walked into it and they thought, you know, they they misread me and they tried to exploit what they thought was weakness, which was just kindness that I had. Um, but I also am like, I look back and I'm like, oh, geez, you know, that was super mean. Mm hmm uh and at the same time part of me is like ha ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so anyway but i try to like always err on the side of compassion and not to like use that unless absolutely necessary you know right so anyway thank you for not playing yeah uh, appreciate it well just it probably would have been a bigger rupture that would have been more difficult to repair Mm -hmm. And it's like sometimes those coping strategies, like they're not, they're not always like the, the most effective, right? The most yeah. effective use of like time and energy, like in the long term, yeah. even though in those moments, like they can feel really good, you know, our ego can be like, oh, oh super yeah. like powerful and, you know, got you. 
kind of thing, um, you know, just in terms of relationship, just, and, and even in life, like it's a risk, you know, it's a risk you take when you like spite somebody or you stab somebody back like that. You never know what that person's going to do, you know? So they're, they're just like kind of, I would say coping strategies that our subconscious calculates that like this is this has been an effective strategy and it's worked but like don't push it right mm -hmm. you piss off the wrong person you say the wrong thing right you never know <laughs> never know so the triggers yes. it's our invitation invitation to listen to feel and to heal the button heal the button because the button's getting pushed energetically but you know it's it's kind of like if you're a burn victim you don't leave the icu but in the world we can have all these wounds and all these buttons all over our bodies and eventually in contact with another human, someone's going to bump into us and they're going to push our buttons. And if we're consistently blaming everyone for our own sensitivity, then we have no responsibility and we're consistently victimized and we have no power whatsoever, right? whatsoever to make any changes. Mm -hmm. And then we're not a sovereign being and we're not able to be in, in healthy relationships. It's only codependent relationships right. where someone's a bad guy and you're the victim and you know, but that there are ways that we can, that we can heal, right? That's like the good mm. news is that you, you can, yeah. you can go inside, you can forge a relationship with these things, with these parts yeah. of you from the past. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can find out, sometimes you can't find out, but you can listen and you can be there with them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can recontextualize those things and like deepen your own relationship with yourself. And you can become less reactive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you can talk to those parts and say, look, that might have been true in the past, like where we didn't have power, we were left alone, or maybe that person was actually being a phony or lying, you know? Mm -hmm. But but now it's like, is that same thing actually happening now? Like, is are all these assumptions true? Are all these interpretations true? Is this perspective like, the truth with a capital T and most of the time it's not it's just it's like stories that were created by these these younger parts that just had that younger less emotionally mature perspective of life and had very limited uh, power and maximum vulnerability mm -hmm. maximum dependency on on other people like I don't feel completely um you know <laughs> so in this time around with this part of me this wounded part of me like i don't know if i healed anything or, or greatly changed anything but i know that i was more perceptive i mm -hmm. felt it more like i heard its story more right mm -hmm. i heard its message more you know and you know when it came to me there is like there is you know like a term we use enmeshment right mm -hmm. so the like the the energy and the pattern and the the emotions that came up were really strong and me the adult me like the balanced me the 41 year old 41 year old me i would say for a time was like not necessarily fully online you know mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I probably was, I, I, yeah, I was like a little bit bummed about that, you know, that like we're back here again, you know, which is, which is a certain, you know, like energy that I try to work on now with myself, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. like not, not to get not to think about that part of me 
that wounded part of me like in a negative light. It's really, mm -hmm. it, and it's it, sometimes it's hard to do, and it, I'm not perfect at it, but um, of still having compassion for myself mm -hmm. and uh, still loving myself despite, um, uh, you know, feeling shame and feeling, uh, you know, that, like that I like I don't have my shit together, you know, and that like yeah. I have parts of this like me, you know. So. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, because I, cause I think about the next time that, that it comes, you know, like, mm -hmm. what can I do or how can I show up different? Like, like, I'm at a point right now, like, OK, this is a cue for me to, to work on myself and to show up for myself, you know, and, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, and I'm trying in the ways that I do and I, that I work with myself and to show up for myself. But it's like, you know, am I failing, you know, am I still, mm -hmm. you know, so. I don't know. I, I think I just say that, uh, that <laughs> share that to say that, um, you know, that it is like a process and there's, yeah, I don't know. There's always like, st like stuff to learn, but that like that things are changing and that I'm still like hopeful and grateful for that, you know, and even yeah. being trying to be like grateful for these pieces of me, cause these are like strong, strong with lots of energy you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's you know we all have our um stuff right that we go through we ha all have our triggers and parts of ourselves that we become identified with where we believe that we are that emotion that there's no separation and i think it's really normal to forget that it's like for so many of us, we did not have, we weren't parented with an emotional skill set. So in so many ways, we are new parents with emotional babies. And it's like, part of that recognition is when you have those emotions is like, baby is always right. Like whatever these emotions are, are here, they're communicating things, they're, they're messages. So just like a baby might be crying, who knows why it's crying but the, the message is in the emotion. It's like, there's, there's an alarm, there's an alert here. And as a, a parent who's really empowered and knows that they're gonna figure it out and knows like that it's okay for there to be children, for you to have children, like let's say this part was like a child of yours, you would say, this child is like really needing some support. Like, oh my gosh, he's in a world of pain right now. You know, he's mm -hmm. thinking this and believing this. So it's like, and I know you well enough to know that if you had this physical child that was like this, you would do everything in your power to be like, I'm gonna figure out how to love this child. I'm gonna like find them the best, you know, practitioner to work with them. I'm going to take them to the park. So they experience joy. Like I'm going to do everything I can so that they're happy and they know that I love them and that I'm mm, here. Right. And it's, I think it's more difficult when we're feeling those feelings and in the past when feelings can become triggers where we know that having a negative emotion might mean that we'll be punished or rejected or abandoned or mm -hmm. shamed. Right that immediately the that emotion coming up is a trigger to feel massive shame and not want to have anything to do with that emotion because experiencing that emotion in the past was so painful because the repercussions of experiencing that was so painful and when we're able to get a little bit more distance and i don't mean detachment or apathy around this emotion we're able to be like this part of me is still a child and it's just on the struggle bus right now because it, it was underdeveloped because it got locked in the closet for so many years. So it needs the, the utmost compassion, the utmost help, the handholding and talking and listening and like apologies. I'm so sorry. Like, tell me more, you know? And once we're able to step back and not, and, and know that we are not that part, but that we can care for that part 
then I think that's where all the healing is. Because if we shame something, then we're in resistance to its existence. And there's no healing that can be done because we, there's, there's no understanding happening. It's just like, I can't have any part of this. Like I'm totally alone and detached and disconnected, or I'm feeling total disgust, um, hatred and dislike for this thing. So there's no redemption in that when we're, we're feeling those things. And then above all, just take another step and be like, this is just me doing my best as a new parent. I'm going to fuck up repeatedly. Just as my parents weren't perfect, I'm not going to be perfect. And there's mm-hmm. no way I could expect myself to show up and be perfect at all times. Because there's so many different parts of us just like trying to figure out how to become enlightened and be connected and be happy and be joyful, mm-hmm. you know, all the time. And it's just like, it's impossible. You know, we're going to be doing that for the rest of our lives, just trying to, just right. wanting you know, to self-express more, to enjoy life more, to, to be fully satisfied and all those things. Um, Amen. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about leaving, leaving, um, you know, the listeners with, uh, you know, maybe like a few, I, I feel like we've given some tips about triggers, but maybe just like the short list of how you can start practicing kind of like what to do when you get triggered. Why not? Okay, sure. Uh, one, I would just say like one, the biggest one is just awareness that you're triggered, which is a fairly monumental task in and of itself yeah. sometimes. Yes. For even myself, it's like these little chinks in the armor that happen. It's like these subtle shifts in energy that are going down, 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 right? All day, mm-hmm. depending. Because it's usually not just like a big you know, trigger. Sometimes it is like, you know, in our case, like we kind of both had a, a decent, like, ah, like something happened, right. Where it was right. like a big enough ripple that we were like, holy shit, something's happening here. Right. Right. We have these like smaller ripples. You can have like little, you know, da, 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 down. And before you know it, you're like, I am feeling like garbage. I'm depressed. I'm blah, like whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Oh yeah, all these little triggers later, there were things happening. My energy was shifting down and I just wasn't really that present. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you notice you're triggered, the better. And there's like a millions of, there's millions of different indicators that you're triggered. Um, Your heart speeding up, nausea, like just noticing the physical sensations in your body changing. I call Uh, it emotional blood pressure, right? You can get a sense of like, yeah. Yeah. Um, or you can, you can feel low, you can feel tired. Um, Mm -hmm. there's just, you you can feel horny. You can feel like so many agitated. You can, you can start feeling hot or prickly. Like there's just like a million things and everyone has their own physical manifestations Mm -hmm. because it depends on whether you're triggered and you're moving towards something to like fight it or you're triggered and you're moving away from something to try to run or hide from it or whether you feel like you're stuck in that situation, you have to make everything nice, which is like bonding, or whether you just shut down completely, you just freeze where you are. Um, So it's kind of noticing like those physical sensations, a change in your energy, like are you not feeling as happy and calm? And then um, next is noticing the impulse. So what is it that you wanna do? So if you're able to be like, oh, I'm triggered, like, oh, I felt my energy shift, then you can say, what is my impulse? Like, what am I wanting to do right now? Because right. oftentimes we can like want to run away from having to deal with the emotion or mm-hmm. grab a brownie, a glass of wine. I love brownies. Um, like, like uh, get on YouTube, uh, mm-hmm. you know, watch some porn and masturbate, uh, smoke cigarettes, smoke weed, um, do some heroin, like whatever. Um, I was just like to a podcast about legalizing all drugs. So I have heroin on my brain. This guy talked about it like so glowingly. And I was like, wow, well, I might try some heroin someday. Uh, anyway, it was a fascinating podcast. On a, it was Aubrey Marcus. You know, I like listening to his podcast. Um, anyway, uh, so it's like if we're escaping, confronting our own emotions, it's like, what is, what is my impulse or what is my distraction of choice? And then once you've identified the impulse, see if you can just sit with it. Just don't do it. Just say, I'm noticing I want to do this thing. I'm noticing I want to punch Nick in the face. 
I'm not going to punch him in the face, but I want to punch him in the face, right? Or whatever. Just like holding that impulse and then just like stretch it. And then ask yourself like what the deeper need is. Like, what am I really needing? I know I, I have the impulse to like grab a beer. Like, I just want to take the edge off, but it's like, I'm needing something more. And that might be connection. I might need to tell myself, like, I don't have to do it all right now. I might need to make a list of everything that's, like, on my head, you know, just just all the pressure, you know. I might need to set a boundary, right? And then choose the thing that's more generative and less sexy. Glass of wine, it's pretty sexy. Doing a random, like, hot Tinder hookup, pretty sexy. Maybe not the best thing to do if you're running from something emotionally, so choose something that is less sexy, but that is filling the actual need. Like maybe you just need to move and take a walk. Maybe you need to call a friend and like talk about your emotions, whatever's going on. And after you do the thing that is less sexy, because it's not going to give you as big of a dopamine hit, you're not mm-hmm. going to get that endorphin rush from it. You're going to celebrate that you did something different and generate your own endorphins and dopamine for having chosen a new path. And that will help cement um, your new thing. But oftentimes, even the first step takes a lot of awareness, just practice to become aware of the triggers. And, And even just having that awareness, like, oh, I'm triggered. Oh, I felt an energetic shift. Like, that's a huge success and and something worthy of practicing. Yeah. I think even one of the beginning things that I did was, uh, I followed a thing of every, for, I only did it for a couple of days and I would, it's not an all the time practice, but uh, set your, set a timer on your phone for 30 mm-hmm. minutes and every 30 minutes, just spend a moment feeling what's yeah. happening in your body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, that's the beginning of it is just like getting into your body and mm-hmm. being with yourself, just like listening and feeling and just like get a sense of what's happening and then go about your day right like you can mm-hmm. <laughs> when you we start to uh, bring our awareness to the inside right like that's the first move is we have to come in right and be mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. with what's happening and uh, you know so many of the strategies are to not be here with what's happening in our bodies and in our beings right yeah yeah I have a YouTube habit, right? I get caught in it all the time, right? Listening to what you just said. Like, like, and I was just like thinking about it, you know, like, that's not going to be as juicy. Like, yeah, I'm like, my brain's like, yeah, you know, that's not going to be as juicy. You know, we get something out of this, right? And it's like, yeah, I know, but we're killing ourselves. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah. I liked what you said. I like what you added. But yeah, um, hopefully everyone finds this useful and is able to practice. And we would definitely love to hear your comments, um, yeah. your feedback, if you have any ideas for podcasts, um, things you'd like to hear more about or like us discuss. We're happy to do that and um, you know, reach out. Don't be a stranger. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. So. Cool. We'll see you all next time. Okay. Bye.